Now we're starting off a little rudimentary here, uh, some basic software and camp, but we will be improving as time goes on and our subscribers grow. Uh, we even got a 6K drone for some of our more better uh, outdoor shots and things like that. So stick with us and please subscribe to The Woodshed. Okay, going to show you some of the gear we use here. This is our underwater flounder light. It's basically just an LED flashlight or spotlight. Somebody cut out the, the innards of it and glued it into this PVC elbow here. And this looks like an uh, inch and a half PVC or th three quarter inch PVC. Um, it's got a little handle here. You hold on to it so you can twist it and, and uh, search around in the water in the back. You have your battery clip. This one needs to be redone a little bit, but there's a battery clip. And then uh, the batteries are basically just a four pack of double A's, but these LEDs work off 4.5 volts. So I basically had to eliminate one position there, as you can see. So you can get a meter and some solder and play with that. But anyway, three, three double A's, four and a half volts. Basically what I do is uh, you clip it in, put it in there. Clip it in, put the lid on, screw it on tight so it's watertight, and you're done. And this is your flounder light. You can make one of these for probably around 100 bucks uh, all in. Okay, so I totally botched at the audio down at the coast trying to show you the gig. But it's essentially, that particular one was a spear gun spear, so it already was threaded for a spear gun tip that's barbed. I just put a collar, pipe collar on the back with a, a stringer. So essentially what you do is you... Uh, you, you put the spear through the fish and then once it's through you hold it up and then it slides down onto the stringer and then you're on your way. You don't have to get your hands wet or cold or anything like that. So you can see they're, they're pretty easy to spot and know what they are. They have a distinctive shape. Uh, a lot of people say they worry about, you know, mistaking them for stingrays. I can, you can tell it's pretty obvious what they are and uh, never, never once have I ever stuck something, uh, that wasn't a flounder. I did stick a dead flounder one time that was already on my stringer, uh, but that's about the only time, I think. And I noticed he got away. Um, sometimes if you get in the water too early, they're kind of skittish and they don't, they think, you know, well, it's not quite dark enough for me to hide. And if you get too close, they will, they will bolt. Okay, this one, I think was one of the biggest ones of the night here. He was a beast, uh, probably a good, I don't know, 20, 22 inches long, um, kind of hard to hoist them up. You really have to get on top, straight on top of them and, and thrust like you're trying to pin them to Texas uh, just to make sure you don't clip them or, or don't go down deep enough and they get away. Giggity. This is a good uh, uh, picture of one sitting in a bed. A lot of times they make these beds and when they swim off, it looks like, like a perfectly shaped little flounder. And, you know, we used to get 10 a night, and uh, this, this uh, time we only got five, and uh, we're still lucky to get that. Right here. This one's pretty easy to see. Uh, sometimes you get lucky, and they're real shallow water, and they're just easier to see and easier to, to spear or to gig. Uh, 